Hi, everybody. I love ChatGPT. I mean, I love ChatGPT. I'm an accountant. I know nothing about software development, but this new ChatGPT 5, whether you use the regular edition or the thinking edition, is absolutely incredible for software development. And again, I know nothing about code. I know nothing about software development. However, because I am a very, very heavy QuickBooks user, all the time I notice things that are broken with QuickBooks or things that should work with QuickBooks in a certain way. So I use ChatGPT to hack my way into making QuickBooks work the way I want it to work. Now I'm gonna go really, really deep and slow and show you step-by-step step how I use ChatGPT 5 at this point to do what they call vibe coding, which is you ask it to write the code for you, but you give it instructions and you do have to learn a couple of techniques that I'm gonna walk you through. So I'm gonna give you a specific example, just kind of follow it step-by-step, step. and my idea behind this video, I hope to inspire you to test some of these things on your own, you know, get, get playful, play with ChatGPT, you know, do some of the things that you learned through this video to create new innovations. Because if you, especially if you're another accounting professional, even if you're a business owner, you know, like I think that uh, the greatest gift that artificial intelligence is giving us is democratizing code for us. And you know, I feel bad for software developers that, you know, used to be the only ones that kind of knew how to do this stuff, but now they're going to have to up their game too. But let me walk you through how, how I think about using ChatGPT for fixing QuickBooks issues, for example. And there's a specific reason for that is because I actually have a software that's an add-on to QuickBooks where I take all these things that I experiment with ChatGPT and I add them and I make them automated. And I'll kind of talk about that at the end. So let's say, for example, this is the example I'm going to give you. ChatGPT bank feeds. I love ChatGPT bank feeds. I love downloading transactions to the bank. But one thing that drives me crazy is that for me to add attachments to any of these transactions, I have to actually click on this little plus sign under the under the paperclip. I have to click on that, and then I go and I gotta go find my receipt and load it in there. I much prefer to click and drag. So let's say, for example, I happen to have a bunch of receipts here in my um, in my computer in PDF or whichever way you know I you have the receipts already in your computer. It's and I want to just click and drag into these transactions. Now you would say you would think logically that the people who have into it would just build that in, but they don't. <laughs> so if I actually click and drag and try to click and drag into any of these things, it doesn't work. It just opens the attachment for me for me to see it. And I, I get it. That's the that's the behavior the way it's supposed to work. But I think that when we have receipts in our desktop and we have them organized a certain way, click and dragging is going to be much, much better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use ChatGPT to guide me to the process to hack QuickBooks into allowing me to add attachments um, by doing uh, clicking and dragging. And by the way, I experiment all sorts of crazy things like this. Many times uh, I get these suggestions from Facebook. So I have a group called uh, Write Tool for QuickBooks Online, which is connected to the software I was telling you about, which again, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then when, uh, when people give suggestions, like all this time, people go in there and say, hey, I have a challenge with, you know, Pro, you know, with this screen, it's not helping me do this, or, you know, I'm in the you know, sales receipt and this link is not working. And just like all the time, people are giving suggestions in it, and I read through them. And anytime a suggestion seems doable, I'll go jump into ChatGPT and try to build a solution for it. I test it, and then later on, I build it into Write Tool, which is a, an extension, a Chrome extension that, that includes all of these things that I've been thinking about for the last couple of years. So let me walk you through how you would do something like this. First thing, you have to tell ChatGPT, you have to give it an idea of what the screen looks like. So one thing I like to do is I just take a screenshot. So I'll just grab a screenshot in here and I will just uh, send it to ChatGPT and tell it. So that's how you kind of create a little bit of context at the beginning. Right? It's simple, I'm just gonna say, this is what the bank, the banking screen looks like. This is what the banking screen looks looks like in QBO, okay? Or you can type QBO, you can type QuickBooks Online, whatever it is. So there's really nothing else at this point. You just send it a screenshot, you give it a little bit of context. Now ChatGPT starts understanding um, maybe where you're getting with this. So, uh, even I'll suggest some things or break out some things or read anything from the screen. Don't worry about that. That's just the way it kind of thinks through stuff. 
But the next step is I'm actually going to grab code from the website and paste it and say, hey, this is the code that, um, that I want you to look at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click anywhere on the screen, especially in a blank space, and I'm gonna click right here where it says inspect. So by clicking inspect, I'm gonna have this bar open up on the right hand side. And you can resize it a little bit, so if it's a little bit intrusive, you can resize it and have it to a point that is comfortable, that you, you still kinda see what's going on. And then you're gonna click on this little icon, which is called the elements selector. So by clicking on this icon, I can hover over any of the elements. And as soon as I have any of the area that I wanted to work on, so specifically, let's say right here, that you click on that, it, it takes you into the area of the code that contains just the section of the area I wanna work on. I can expand this and then you know click a little bit deeper and see if I can find a more defined version of that box, but it really doesn't matter. I can just grab you know any general area that encompasses everything that contains the content that I'm gonna work with, and then I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna click on copy and click on copy element. That's just gonna copy a bunch of code and it's the website's code. So I'm gonna switch back into ChatGPT and then I'm gonna say, this is the HTML of the trans transactions table when I click on inspect. Okay, and I just paste that in there. Okay, and then sometimes I'll start analyzing and doing things with it. Again, it really doesn't matter. Just give it the context and then little by little, you're gonna hone down specifically on what you are looking for. Now keep in mind at any point in time that ChatGPT, um, you ask it to give it a task, it might go into what's called deep think mode. So it'll take a little bit longer. Now you can overwrite that by click on getting a quick answer. But sometimes if uh, ChatGPT suggests to go into thinking mode, just have it go into thinking mode, be patient because it just, it goes a little bit deeper into the analysis and understands the code a lot better. Okay, then it starts um, answering and saying, okay, I have a general understanding and somehow it start, also starts writing code. I, I don't know why it does that <laughs> um, you know, because it starts suggesting immediately to like fix things for you or whatever. Right now, I, I don't want it to do that, but although it's, it's giving you code right now to export the data as a CSV. So that's actually pretty cool. Like I didn't even ask it to do that um, and it did that, did that for me. So if it, once it's done writing the code, you can actually start right away with whatever code it gives you, whatever suggestion it gives you, you can start kind of seeing what it does. So I'm gonna do that, that's not what I, I'm trying to achieve, I'm trying to achieve a different thing. But there's the, the first set of code, it's suggesting, hey, with this, you can get a CSV file of the data table. So I'm gonna click on copy, there in ChatGPT, just copy the code. And then the way this code works is, I go back into um, QuickBooks, and then in the same inspect window, so you have to have the inspect window, but instead of being in this element section, I'm gonna open this up a little bit more. We're gonna be in the console section. If you don't see console, uh, because your screen is too small, maybe it's like this, you can click on this uh, the little arrow keys to expand, and then you can click on console. But you must be in the console section so you can paste in the code. So I click on console, and then uh, there's usually a bunch of stuff going on in the console, so what I do is I click on this little button here that kind of clears the screen. That actually kind of helps just know exactly where my cursor is. So I have a blank slate on the console, and then I'm literally just gonna paste the code I got from ChatGPT. Now, if I press enter one more time, ChatGPT suggested immediately without me telling them to uh, create a CSV exporter so you can have a CSV version of the data that's here. Now, it's maybe not that important because you can export to Excel, but I'm just, giving you an example of the code, how code, how loading code in the console works. So I press enter on that, and then it does this thing. And then right here in the download section, you see that it downloaded this thing, uh, this file. And then when you open up the file, it's basically a spreadsheet version of what you're looking at. So pretty neat. Um, that's kind of the first example. However, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm gonna hit clear here one more time. Um, as usually, always hit clear there to have a clean console and then I go back into ChatGPT and ask it to do something different. So first I'm gonna say, um, you see how on every row there is a plus icon under the column where there's a paperclip, comma. That button triggers 
opening a window for you to select an actual attachment from your computer to attach a transaction to that one row, period. I actually want a piece of code that will override the current screen. So instead of me having to click on that plus icon, that the entire row is sensitive towards me drag and dropping a file into that row. Okay? I literally just dictated to it. I, you know, just talk, you know, in, in English terms. I didn't use any coding terms or anything like that. Then I'm gonna hit send and it's gonna it's gonna process what I said. And it's gonna try to figure out um, how to write it. Sometimes it'll write the code immediately. Other times it'll kind of take a while and ask me some questions about sort of the execution of it. So we're gonna wait until it finishes thinking and then see if it gives me a code right away for me to test. Okay, there we go. So it's apparently it looks like it's already uh, giving me the code. So we just have to wait until it finishes writing the code. So once it's finishing 100% rendering that, we're gonna copy that code and we're gonna paste it in there. There you go. Now the code ended. It always ends in a semicolon, by the way. That's kind of a interesting little coding thing. So you have to wait until you see the last semicolon and that gray area and that white area kind of shift. That's when you know the code is complete. So I'm gonna click on copy here on the top. We're copying that entire code. We're going back into um, bank transactions. And then we're just gonna paste that code. Again, I'm gonna clear uh, the screen so it's a little bit easier to kind of see. I'm gonna paste that code in there, press enter, and then it just ran the code. Now, nothing happened, nothing actually happened, but I think it worked, so we'll see. So let's bring in the, the receipts. And I also, I'm gonna close the console because I actually don't need to deal with the console anymore. By the way, this will only work in the instance that you're in. Once you hit refresh or go back and go back in or open a new window, with the bank transactions, that code is not built in into the QuickBooks uh, online ecosystem. Like, so it's a one-time thing. Uh, however, that's why I, I built the app called Write Tool, which again, I'll, we'll get back to that, which adds all these features permanently so you don't have to be dealing with code. The purposes of this video really is for, to inspire you to um, use you know, ChatGPT to experiment with all these different ways that you can improve QuickBooks and then email me, right? I, I'll, I'll put my email in the bottom here somewhere. Email me if you have any interesting code for me to test and any ideas or things we can continue to add to right tools so we can continue to enhance the QuickBook experience. So check this out. So now I'm gonna grab any of my files here. I'm gonna click and drag them here. And notice how uh, it should highlight. Let's see. There we go. Drop that. Okay, that seems like it worked. Okay, there's a little one there. Okay, we're gonna test it in a second. I'm gonna grab another one. Click and drag to the next line. There we go. Grab another one, click and drag to the next line. Grab another one, click and drag to the next line. Boom. So I literally clicked and dragged into four transactions and I'm just gonna accept the transactions that I say, so I'm not gonna get into like categorizing or anything. So I'm gonna post these four here and then I'm gonna go back and just watch them to see if it actually worked, okay? So I'm gonna go here into my uh, recent transactions and I'll open any of these. So these are the four transactions we just entered from the bank feed. So I'll open any of them here and then crossing our fingers that this worked and look at this, there's my attachment. If I click on that, boom, my, extent, my, my attachment worked. So how about that? Uh, all of a sudden I'm a software developer. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Now again, it might not work now the second time that there's been a refresh. Let me see if it's working. So now it's not working. So if it stops working, then you gotta go back, pick up the code, go back here, right click inspect. Again, every time there's like a major refresh or you come back, we we'll go back into here into console, I'll clear that console, paste that code again, enter, and I should be able to start clicking and dragging. There you go. Clicking and dragging into the transactions. So that simple. Now, that's a pain in the butt, right? If you're not a programmer, a developer, that's like going into ChatGPT, copying that code. That, that's, I know it's a lot of moving parts. One thing I recommend is cr go create a Google Doc. I usually always do that. Create a Google Doc, and I'll call this one, um, just, just give it a name, right? So click and drag attachments to QBO banking, right? 
and so that way I save it. I create my own um, my own uh, um, uh, uh, library of code. So if I need to use it in the future, I have it saved in there. Now I strongly believe that this demonstration, if you followed it and tried it yourself, should be compelling enough for you to actually start looking at ChatGPT from a different perspective. You're, I know you're not a software developer. I know you're not, well, you might be, but I'm saying most of you might not be a software developer or might not be a software programmer, but take a look at how people that use software or different things day to day, they know what the real problems are. They know the stuff that slows them down. You know, use ChatGPT to play around with these different options and then share it with colleagues or whatever, share it with me. And then, you know, eventually, you know, we'll create actual software that just kind of runs and does things for you automatically. Now, I'm going to show you this app called uh, Write Tool. So I'm just going to go into Google and literally just type Write Tool. And then there should be a link to the Write Tool uh, Chrome Web Store. So you click on that and then there'll be a button here that says um, add to Chrome. So in this case, mine's already added. So um, it says remove from Chrome. But if I remove from Chrome, you'll see that there will be a button there that says add to Chrome. And notice that there's, you know, five star ratings. People absolutely love this tool because this is what we do. We fix little QuickBooks quirks here and there. And we actually have real programmers, <laughs> you know, in, in the team. I'm actually, I'm the only one that doesn't know programming, but I, I get a lot of ideas. I get feedback from from Facebook and the community and, and I'm a QuickBooks user myself. So I'm always noticing, you know, things that are broken with, with QuickBooks. So I'm playing with it myself. I'm adding to the uh, process so we can develop features really, really quickly. Once you install right tool and there's a free version that enhances a lot of navigational stuff, there's a paid version that adds a lot of um, batching. You're going to see this uh, uh, na right navigation bar that loads up and there's a whole bunch of features. I don't need, this video is not about right tool. You know, I'll, I'll put links to right tools channel so you can see we have a gazillion videos with all the different features, but we add all these type, type of things, right? And then it's, it's a right navigation bar. You have favorites, you have batching tools, you have all sorts of things. I'm actually just gonna click on the settings button here and just show you every one of these things that can be turned off and on. It's an example of the one that I just did. So like the attachments little thing, it's one of the things you can turn off and on here. As a matter of fact, but I'm recording this video at the same time that we're actually loading that feature into into Right Tool. So you can actually go into uh, Right Tool and you can click on any of these settings and see every single thing you can do. And you click on this little eye icon and the little eye icon explains to you what it does. And then there's a video just explaining what that feature does. And there are over a hundred features that you can turn off and on and it's totally customizable. So you can, you know, really customize your experience. So there's some features you don't need, you know, don't turn them on. Features you need, you, you turn them on. You can turn on everything and kind of see what, what that looks like. There's a little button here that lets you turn everything off and on all in one shot, right? So as, as you turn them off and on, you know, and you, you know, save and refresh, uh, Right Tool actually keeps track of, you know, how many things are turned off and on here. And you can turn off and on any of them. You can even search. So if you're looking for a feature having to do with the chart of accounts, type chart and then here's all the things that affect the chart of accounts. Something to do with reconciliation. So just type reconcile, search, and then all the things that affect reconciliation. Anything having to do with banking, you know, like this example with the attachments, search that, all the things that affect banking. Anything that has to do with, I don't know, the register, you know, there we go. Anything that has to do with reports, there we go. So like you can search and see all the different things that we have developed, again, kind of the same way, you know, not necessarily through ChatGPT, but we develop them as scripts that run in the page and they overwrite the way kind of QuickBooks is supposed to work. And we add all sorts of like little additional pieces of information to every screen to really speed up your process. And, and, and I want to inspire you to, to try it. And I want to inspire you to contact me once you created this awesome thing. So then we can grab that code and throw it into the right tool and make the QuickBooks Online navigation much better together. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.